Hello, welcome to the Greek Gastronomy Festival uh, at the Hong Kong Polytechnic University, the School of Hotel and Tourist Management. Uh, we are starting this process with some videos with the master chefs, chefs that have been Greek chefs who have been around the world and they have been doing fantastic things. Our first guest is Tony Cavalleros, who is currently in Maryland, the United States, and it's great to have you with us, Tony. You are our first Thank you. chef. Uh, oh, wow. to, to I, hope, you. I hope I'm lucky. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. Tell us how you end up being a chef. What brings you into, into the gastronomy? Well, I, I didn't have... Um, the Greek gastronomy in particular. Okay, I didn't have much choice for the Greek gastronomy. I'm Greek, you know, so this is uh, my own gastronomy, my own food. So I love it, you know, and I like to promote it. But uh, I became a chef. Uh, I was born into a family where my grandfather was a chef. It was in Cairo, Egypt. He was an immigrant from Greece to Egypt. He was working there as a chef. He had a very successful restaurant for 47 years. So that's all I wanted to do. I moved to Athens to do my Greek schooling. And then I went to study at the hotel and restaurant school in South Africa, in Johannesburg, where I lived there afterwards 20 years, always in the restaurants, back to Greece, and uh, here in the States now, 48 years later, always in the restaurant business, always in the food business. I'm a teacher, I am a consulting uh, person. I go around helping people, especially here in the States, you know, to teach the cooks how to Greek, how to cook Greek, because the Greek restaurants here, they don't always have Greek cooks. They don't always have Greek chefs. So it is very difficult to teach somebody that doesn't have the culture, the Greek food. Mm. So that's what I'm doing right now. The Greek food, to what we know out there, you know, it is completely different. You know, when you go to Greece and you go and search the islands and the villages and to see the Greek, the real Greek food is completely different than what people know. I keep saying that to, to Jonathan. Jonathan Sutton <laughs> is my, my good friend and colleague here in PolyU. So, yeah, I, I wanted to, to kind of ask you, um, you've always wanted to be a chef. Have you had any periods of time where that's diminished a little bit, maybe become less, less motivated to be a chef? Um, and how yes. have you kind of re-motivated yourself? Yes, that was a year and a half ago when they stopped us from the restaurant, you know, because of COVID. Yeah. And uh, I thought that it. now it's time to hang my apron and I'll say I'll do something else. So I went into the video recording. I went to do my channel on uh, YouTube when I'm going around Greece recording the real Greek culture. Mm. And uh, that's what I'm doing now. I'm doing the same thing, but with a different media, okay. you know, because <laughs> okay, I'm getting old. I can't stand, you know, 10 and 12 hours in the kitchen anymore. So that was, that came out nice. <laughs> the video series is fantastic. Uh, and it kind of, you bring so much uh, wonderful uh, talent forward. And we are very grateful to you because you have donated some of the videos your, yourself and also Philippos Bandis that we're going to interview later today and a couple of others. It's Thank you so much, Tony. Pleasure. He, 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 he. So, so I'd like to ask about, um, I guess, uh, the learning process of being a chef. So, you know, you, you've been a chef for a long period of time um, and you've gone to many different parts of the world. Some of it has been, I guess, family pool stuff, which has brought you to Egypt. Um, how do you continue learning as a chef yourself? What would be your go to kind of things to continue to learn? You never stop learning. Yeah. You know, uh, I, I said that, you know, so many times, especially this year, I went to Greece, you know, to do the filming of my videos. Mm. And I went to Crete in Sitia. And I've seen things and tasted, uh, and tasted ingredients that I have never tested in my life before. And I'm not talking about ingredients, foreign ingredients to me, you know, like if I had to come to China or if I go to Japan or if I go somewhere else. I'm talking about my own country, mm. you know, and there yeah. were ingredients that I didn't even know. And there were techniques that I saw from simple women and men cooking at home. 
But, you know, this is what gives us the techniques to change them and modernize them and go and do the cooking that we do. In so the it kind of continues to stimulate you and make you kind of, you know, look to, to uh, further your skills and, and things like that. That's really cool. If, if we go on to maybe um, looking at Greek cuisine um, and why it's so special, um, and I, I'm not from Greece, but I know that you're surrounded by a number of um, heavyweight kind of nations, I guess, which have their own very strong um, cuisine bases. What, what is unique or different about Greek cuisine? Um, and how does that stand out amongst those other neighboring countries? First of all, I will say the simplicity. Mm. The real Greek food is simple. Second is we have fresh ingredients. Mm. We use fresh ingredients. And we use ingredients that we find around us. We don't bring, we don't import other ingredients. That's why you see the Greek food, unless you are a Greek that came from a minor Asia or from Egypt or from elsewhere, we don't have spices. We only have got herbs. Uh, we don't use many big animals in our in our uh, food, in our menu, you know, we use small animals. Mm. Uh, we don't use a lot of meat. We have a lot of fish. Yeah. We have a lot of vegetables. Yeah. This is what makes Greek food. And another thing, you know, that is fantastic is that we use so much salt and our food is still not salty. You know, mm. I think it's the, the whole culture of the food that makes the food different. And, and I think a lot of people don't realize is that I think someone was telling me there is no place in Greece that is more than 60 or 70 kilometers away from the sea. Mm, okay. So you've got That's a lot right. of seafood yeah. apart from the islands. So also on the mainland, you've got a lot of seafood that is very easily accessible. Right, right. But also you've got a very fertile uh, land that is actually right. producing different things. Yeah. So the simplicity of the ingredients. Are there any particular like key ingredients that you'd say are, are very iconic to Greek cuisine? Um, olives. Olives. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Yeah, okay. Olives, oh, you see, olives and fruit like figs and nuts mm. and some other vegetables, you know, it is something that we used to have right back, you know, in the history of, of uh, Greek cuisine. Now, the rest that you see today, lemon, I mean, there is no food, you know, in Greece without lemons. There is no food in Greece almost without tomato. These things, they came after the 1800s. You know, they, mm. we didn't have them. We didn't have potatoes. We didn't have... Greek cuisine was very poor right up to the 1800s. Mm. It changed afterwards. You know, and uh, before that, most of the recipes that we find in the Greek cuisine, they came from the Byzantine times. Yeah. Okay. You know, they were... They're not really Greek, you know, but it is, you know, they came from the Byzantines uh, because it was a mixture of people there. But when it comes to cooking with olive oil, cooking with uh, honey, cooking with greens, you know, that you find wild on the mountains in the valleys of the Greek valleys, this is, we had it, you know, from the ancient times. Mm. Tony, I'd like to thank you because I keep saying to everybody that Greek food is about <laughs> lemon or tomato. One of the two. <laughs> but they think the most important thing at the end is oregano. Okay. So 30 yes. years ago, when I started traveling, my auntie came along and she gave me a bag of oregano. She said, yeah. I don't know what you'll do, but this will you'll need. And it's very light. So yes. I remember putting them in my suitcase. And ever since, whenever I was going back to Greece, the first thing I will get is oregano. Yeah. A kilo of oregano will see you for six months. I, I wanted to kind of find out about when you did travel to places or live in places like South Africa, um, were there ingredients that you kind of uh, reminded you or inspired you of kind of Greek food? Um, could you see any kind of crossover with any of those places? And similarly with uh, Egypt as well? Yeah, look, Egypt, Greek food, Egypt, South Africa, it's three different completely mm. uh, cuisines, you know? Yeah. And like it is something completely different here in America. But in South Africa, I could find easier Mediterranean ingredients to cook with because, you know, if you see South Africa is right down the same line with the Mediterranean. So you come to Cape Town, there might be different 
seasons, but they do have olives, they have beautiful wines, they've got good ingredients, they have fruit and vegetable, but the South African cuisine is completely different, mm. completely different. It is a beautiful fusion of the Portuguese from Mozambique with Italians and Greeks and Germans and Dutch, everybody that came to live in South Africa, you know, and that made a fantastic cuisine because they've got incredible ingredients mm. right through the season. You know, you can have four seasons in South Africa in the same day. So, yeah, I didn't have problem cooking Greek food in South Africa. Uh, I have more problems here. They, you know, I cannot find the ingredients that I need. Mm. But the South Africa, in, in Egypt, it was completely different again because the Egyptian cuisine is completely different to ours. But all the ingredients that I find in Greece, I could find in Egypt. Right, right, right. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Tony, I noticed that you are cooking spanakopita later on when we play your video. Spanakopita yes. is one of these things that, uh, spinach pie, it's one of these things that you can almost find the ingredients anywhere. You know, here in Hong Kong, you find spinach everywhere. You can find leek and you can find most of the things. I think Greek olive oil, we are working on it. There is some supply here. Tell us mm -hmm. about Spanakopita a little bit so you can introduce your this <laughs> later on. Yes, Spanakopita, you see, our pies, this is what it is 100% Greek. You know, the pies that we make in Greece, any pies, spinach, you know, is one of them because it's easy. You can find spinach maybe sometimes, you know, right through the year. But our pies, it's something that it has always been uh, number one in Greece. Uh, the filo pastry, it, it might, we might be using it, you know, a lot in the Greek cuisine, but it's not, it's not Greek. I mean, they perfect, the Italians perfected actually the filo pastry in the Byzantine times. It's very popular in Greece. If you go into the mainland, you'll see that they make the pies opening the door by themselves. You know, they make the filo by themselves. But that is a pie. It is a, a full of nutrition. It has the cheese. It, I mean, you can do it without the cheese if you want to make it vegan, for example. Okay, but uh, it is a vegetarian dish. It is full of nutrition for a young person or for the whole family. It is easy. That's why I actually had my nephew Yanni, you know, to teach him how to make the spanakopita and to show that it's easy. You know, it is, you just need to do a few uh, simple steps and you can make a beautiful spanakopita. But uh, yeah, it is, I think it's a lovely dish where you can do it everywhere. Mm. So I'd, I'd like to ask you kind of like one kind of wrapping up question about the future of Greek cuisine. Um, and I'd like to hear from you where you feel Greek cuisine is going. You're going to hear about a lot about the Greek cuisine in the future. Mm. We have incredible young chefs that they searching, that they they respect the Greek cuisine and the Greek techniques, you know, of cooking. Because not only the cuisine, you know, the cuisine is techniques, and uh, and uh, you're going to see a lot because all these youngsters they're going to come up with incredible things if they don't start mixing other. You know, make it fusion. Greek is not fusion. You know, Greek is Greek. <laughs> so we have to keep it simple. Mm. We have to keep it tasty. And uh, you'll hear a lot about the Greek cuisine in the future. I'm sure about it. There's many youngsters that they have learned a lot of things and they're ready to come out in the market and show case, you know, the Greek cuisine. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Tony. I'll say Kalimera in the, in the big uh, <laughs> sense of the world. Uh, have a good day. And thank, thank you, you very, very much, much for contributing to the Greek Gastronomy and Diet Festival in Hong Kong Polytechnic University. Always here. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you, Joe. Nice meeting you. Hello, everybody. We're going to make Spanakopita. Yanni is a university student. He lives away from home. So he asked me for the recipe and an easy way to make Spanakopita. Now, you will find thousands, hundreds of recipes for Spanakopita. They're all good. They're all right. Not one of them is wrong. We're going to use beautiful fresh ingredients. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't done that already.
Okay, so this is Yanni. Okay, Yanni is going to do all the cooking today. I'm gonna just give the order. All right, so the instructions. So first things first, we have the leeks that we have to chop and saute until they soft and together with the onion. This is the only thing that we're going to saute. The leeks, the leeks they really have a lot of in them, sand and dirt. So make sure that we wash them properly. So the way to do this is first we cut them. And you wash very well. In goes the licks and the onions. Okay, again, yeah, we have all the herbs. Yeah. The more herbs you have, the better it is. Okay, so now the next thing you do is put in this bowl some of the spinach. Mm -hmm. We're going to do the whole spinach like that. A little bit of salt, and then with your hands you start squeezing. Alright, this is what you need.
and now we're going to do this one by one the filo don't be stingy with your oil and butter this is what's going to make it nice and crispy mm. Take this and put one in like that, a little bit stick out on the side here. We fold this inside. Mm It is stuck in and ready to go into the refrigerator for at least 20 minutes before we put the egg wash, the sesame and send it into the oven. Egg wash. Now we have to score it so all the humidity will come out the way it's cooking. Alright, I'm waiting for your orders. <laughs>